since the start of this year and you see the numbers they are correct the names are not for the Baylor players that's because today marks the immortal 10 game in honor of the 10 men of the Baylor basketball family who lost their lives in a bus crash 97 years ago your officials this afternoon Brett Smith Roger Ayers and Brooks Wells were underway with TCU in their road grays controlling the opening tip Rich it is so loud in here you and I both were commenting you could feel the music the bass was vibrating our chest cavity as we were sitting here through warm-ups this is a fantastic building and with the students back you know it's going to be electric home environments have been so key in big 12 play so far so far home teams three for three in final scores on this saturday in the big 12. baylor trying to make it four for four and number four jacoby walters gets him off to a good start yeah but that's ray j dennis to me i mean he sets up the young freshman we talked to ray j before the start of the game and said How'd you build that chemistry? And he said, look, I've transferred multiple times. I knew I was going to have to come in here and put in work and a beautiful find on the opening possession to set the freshman up. Here's Emmanuel Miller, number two in gray, looking like a first-team All-Big 12 type. Yeah, coming off of an outstanding game. And he does a great job of attacking off the bounce and creating a little bit of seam and being able to elevate up and finish. If you're wondering, why aren't we showing you the score? We're trying. Having we're, some we're technical difficulties. They don't need the score. We can tell them. It's 3-2. <laughs> to two. There's only been two shots made. If you have lost already, I'm concerned. So far, TCU 1 for 2. Baylor 1 for 1, courtesy of that Walter 3. This is the third best percentage three-point shooting team in the nation, Baylor. Jalen Bridges tries to save it. It's out of bounds. And it'll be TCU basketball. Now, if you're going to look at maybe an area of concern a little bit, Ray J. Dennis has not been shooting the ball well over the last two games, just three of 17 shooting. He's been great at dishing it out. Poor communication that time, but a great block. Here's Bridges in transition. The freshman shot fake three. Off the mark this time, Avery Anderson the weak side rebound I need it. that rebound goes out of bounds it'll be Baylor basketball so no communication on the screen in transition and now you got a matchup problem but don't worry about it you can erase it with just an outstanding effort and Misi able to get up and pin that one against the backboard Sean, we talk about Jacoby Walter being a NBA draft park prospect. Eve Misi is another one. Uh, he, he just keeps playing better and better. And I, it's, it's one of those things, if you're Scott Drew, you're like, I'm so happy he's playing so well. And then at the same time, you're like, I wish he wasn't playing necessarily this well. But you need him to, right? And that's what you hope for your players, that they elevate their game, they continue to grow in confidence. Picked off. Here's Tennyson at the other end. Knocked out of bounds by Ray J. Dennis. 27 on the shot clock. That's one of those steals. And they, TCU averaging almost 10 steals per game. It's over nine steals per contest. Gets them extra possessions. And when you're on the road, you need as many extra possessions as you can. Here's Miller. A couple of veterans going face to face. Miller over Bridges, no good. Walter clears for the Bears. Here's Misi. That's an 18-year-old to a 19-year-old. But just outstanding job of keeping it simple. That's one of the things I love about Macy's game. You can lift him to the elbow, and it's a low rip sweep of the floor, one dribble, and he's going towards the basket. Three minutes in, three-point lead for the 15th-ranked Bears. And that's a turnover, and that has been something that has been troubling Jamie Dixon's club. And it really has been in, their, in the two losses they had prior to last time out. Uh, they... At 27 and 19 turnovers in back-to-back -back games, they have to value the basketball on the road. It's so they're great at scoring off of turnovers, but if you hand the ball to your team, your opponent, and you allow them to gain momentum, it's easier for them to find that rhythm and sustain that rhythm and not have to play against your half-court deep. Here's Misi. They go inside out, and Walters off the mark on that three attempt.
Tennyson, the best three-point shooter on this Frogs team. Oh, 50% in conference play so far. They set screens for him, pin downs. He doesn't need a lot of space. And he can lift real quick. Aggressive drive by Micah Peavy with seven on the shot clock. Nisi clears for the Bears. And here's Ray J. Dennis, the veteran, playing in his 148th game as a collegiate. Bridges off the mark. They'll come early and often from beyond the arc for Baylor. And you see, though, when TCU gets the rebound, they are throwing it ahead and looking to see if they can find anything early. Right now, Baylor's done a great job getting back in defensive transition. Here's Xavier Cork. And he traveled along the baseline. We'll take our first time out with 15.44 to go. It'll be Baylor basketball with a three-point lead at home at Foster. New building, and you think to yourself, what can be of this program now that you've got a home court advantage like this? And you talk to the players, and we did before at shoot around it, and how many of them were like, hey, against Cincinnati, this building helped win us that game. And so you start to feel that, and you start to play with better confidence. That's an unforced error by Baylor out of the timeout. Here I'd like to see some made shots, though, Rich. Yeah, we talked about the offense. That would be good. TCU 0 for their last 5 now out of that timeout. Here's Eman, Emmanuel Miller with his second bucket of the afternoon. Excellent job on the offensive rebound, cutting and moving into space. For those of you checking the Big 12 tote board, Texas Tech on the road, a one-point win over number 11, Oklahoma. That's the first road team to win today. And there is Jay Nunn with an and one opportunity. Explosive, aggressive, quick. He does a great job hesitating and then going. But one of the biggest things is how physical he is around the basket. And what I mean by that is absorbing the contact and being able to stay true to his shot form, be able to finish with touch around the rim. So Jaden Nunn, the transfer from VCU, played in the NCAAs with them last year. Had 15 and five in that last second loss last Saturday to Texas. He misses a chance at a three point play and Jameer Nelson Jr. clears for TCU. You talk about white knuckle basketball. Four out of Baylor's five Big 12 games decided by five or fewer. And five out of TCU's six games decided by five or fewer. Here's Ernest Uday. Tried to thread the needle underneath the basket. It goes out of bounds. It'll stay TCU basketball. Uday rushed his first shot attempt, though. I mean, you get, you get, just play with some composure. Slow down. Sometimes when you're back to the basket, you're thinking, I got to go quick. And sometimes it's really better just to settle down. It's like what you said to me at dinner last night. You're like, Sean, settle down. You're we talking had, too quick. We had settle multiple down. courses to get through last <laughs> night in Milo. You don't gotta you don't gotta leave it all out on the court early, Farnham. Bring it back. There's Emmanuel Miller. And Miro Little, freshman, just checked in, number one in gold, and grabs the first rebound. Here's Josh Ojangunu. So Scott Drew going to his bench early. And that's taken away by one of the best steel men in basketball, Jameer Nelson. Anytime you go into a dribble handoff action, we've seen it twice already. TCU is looking to deflect the ball up and give themselves an opportunity. Tennyson with his first three looks good right when it leaves his hand. And that shoot around today, Baylor kept saying, number 11, you can't give him space. You got to communicate any screen action. You've got to stay attached. They did not that time, and TCU able to ca capitalize and tie this thing up. Here's a lob. Oh, John Luder with the finish. My goodness, number 15 with a big two. And a whistle on the play. That's going to go on number one, Miro Little. Four subs on the floor for Scott Drew, bringing some electricity. Yeah, and a beautiful touch pass right there. I mean, you throw it where only your man can get it. And he went up and flushed it. Beautiful pass. Ray J. Dennis, it, it, like, we talk so much about Dwan Harris and his ability to be a pass first point guard and sometimes you want him to be a little bit more aggressive offensively obviously for Kansas But he does such a great job of understanding how to put 
his their teammate. Team, but they've got a couple already early on the road. Here's the freshman Misi, his second bucket. TCU leads by one on the road. Skip pass. Here's Langston Love. Out to Little. Misi went for the offensive board. Love on the deck. But Chuck O'Bannon, the sixth oldest player in college basketball, gets it. I played with his dad at UCLA. Chuck O'Bannon is so old that he was <laughs> the number 30th recruit in the country in 2016. You know who was number 35 that year? Shea Gilgis Alexander, the all-star in the NBA. Played a little while there, too, by the way. Tennyson. That was a heat check, and Caleb Lohner grabs the rebound. You didn't give me a chance to say, how old are you? I know. I'm sorry. I ruined it. <laughs> but you know what? He was hampered with so many injuries yeah. early in his career. Rarely got to see the floor at USC because of those injuries. And it's great that he's had an opportunity to be part of this program and finish out his career. You could say the same thing for Langston Love, number 13, who just gave it up to Dennis. The one more. Little. Again, he went down, no whistle, loose ball. And they're going to call a foul on the floor. It's Chuck O'Ban Jr., last year at the Ferrell Center, hit a game with projects you could possibly imagine in all of college basketball. He was a Big 12 Coach of the Year, three straight years. He's the second youngest active head coach with an NCAA title, of course, Dan Hurley usurping him with their NCAA tournament victory last year. What a pass. He's wide open. Lohner. Hey, just great job by Caleb Lohner working the back line of that defense for TCU. They fell asleep. And they were ball watching. And then they were able to watch the ball sail right through them to an open Caleb Lohner for an easy two. Now trapped at half court. Where's he going, though? I mean, Avery Anderson there was tentative. And against pressure, pressure wants you to be tentative. You and know that you raided his closet and he took his outfit back for today's game? I think so. I mean, I don't even know what that is. Is that a big pom pom? I, yeah, we thought it was a chicken. I think he's head. just a big pom pom. <laughs> I'll take that. I'm buying what you're selling. I mean, I'm for all the, the environment of college basketball is what makes it great. We saw a Amen. lot of discussion today about court storming and should it be done or not on college game day. I will tell you this. You, you can talk about the pro sports, but it's college athletics. We see it in college football, and, and there's a way to have it done where we protect the student athletes and we protect the, the teams, and I've seen it. There was a sports storming earlier this year. Security came out and got the opposing team off and out a back tunnel, and they had to walk around underneath the arena all the way to get back to the locker room. But they weren't cutting across the floor, and I think preparation is key. Well, you can still have court storming, but you've got to have a prepared pro idea of what do you do in that moment when it happens. We had that happen earlier this afternoon in Ames, Iowa. A little Hilton magic yeah. with the Cyclones upsetting the seventh-ranked Kansas Jayhawks. They stormed the floor there. I, I agree with you for what it's worth. I don't think it needs to be a debatable topic. I think it's part of what makes college hoops college hoops. Yeah, and it's the same thing in college football. Remember the goalposts that were thrown in the river in Knoxville? That's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, I don't think destroying property and throwing it in a river ne is necessary. We don't need to take the backboards out, you know, throw them in the river right outside the building here. It's beautiful, by the way. The river is nice. Heavy off the mark. We've got a one-point game inside Foster Pavilion. What else is new in the Big 12? Almost every game decided by one or two possessions. That one's stolen away by Peavy. They've got numbers. Great touch pass. Anderson to Peavy for the finish. And just on selfish touch. I mean, you could see that, that's where the Horn Frogs want to be. You know, and that's where they're most comfortable. Creating offense off of their defense. 
little give and go action force the defense to have to react and that creates a scene to attack here's me see oh i'll take one dunk and up you another one rich what was that <laughs> farnham's out of his seat folks i mean how old that 19 years old <laughs> hey 19 for all you steely dan fans out there Here's Tennyson. Answers with a triple. They got to find third. him. They got to find him right now. I mean, you can't. Like, here's the thing. You have a scouting report. And on the scouting report, says number 11 is a shooter. You have to stay attached. And three times already here in the first half, they've allowed him to get loose. You allow him to get loose, he gets confident. And guess what that does? He starts hurting him. Baylor goes inside again. Why not? They were eight for eight before that tip. Three ball is good. Why not? Just their second three of the afternoon. Baylor down one. Miller's got a mismatch working on Langston Love, and he takes advantage. And the crowd doesn't like it. They wanted a foul. Contact, yes. Flop, yes. Both can be true. TCU on the road looking for just their second road win in Big 12 play. But, Sean, they would be only the second team in the league with two road wins so far. Well, we talked about offenses, and we said, hey, these teams can be explosive. And there's no doubt about it that out in the open day, coach, he'd be like, oh, we're, we're winning by a mile. Yeah. They lost. 110 points combined in the paint between the two teams and 78 made field goals. Mm. I like shots being made. I'll take 78 made field goals. Off the out of bounds. Oh, he missed an easy one. Jacoby Walter got fouled after he picked up his own miss. And he'll go to the line and shoot a pair. Man, that was a bunny. Second foul on Trey Tennyson. I love Jacoby Walter's game. He yeah, plays with incredible energy. You talk to the the people around the program and one of the things that they they mark about him is that he's so mature you know there's a maturity in his approach in his work ethic how he deals with people Paul Biancardi had him eighth in the ESPN 100 Paul Biancardi was on a game last night had a ton of former NBA players kids involved Sierra Canyon Notre Dame great game Sierra Canyon actually came back and knocked off Notre Dame High School out in Los Angeles which by the way brings it full circle back to Jamie Dixon his former high school in which he played basketball before but Jacoby Walter like he, he, he splashed on the scene with the 28 points and he's had some moments where he hasn't shot the ball really well but that's normal for a freshman but the bar and the standard is set so high I think a lot of people expect him to be able to come out and just do it every single game it's it's not easy in particular in this conference with the defenses TV rises up and knocks down the elbow jumper Well, Baylor's had 11 draft picks in the last 11 years, Sean, and Jacoby Walters figures to be number 12. They might have two this year. Misi oh, might be the other one. Talking about Eve Misi as well. He's on the bench right now. Jalen Bridges on the floor, number 11 in gold. And he's got his first bucket of the afternoon. Well, they create so much spacing in their half-court set. And the ball movement and the, the movement without the ball by the players creates that that spacing out on the floor it makes it difficult and creates seems to drive and Baylor does an excellent job of scoring points in the paint they have 12 already here this afternoon a contested three off the mark for Nelson and here's Jaden Nunn bringing the ball up for the Bears chance to tie it oh that one's blocked by Xavier Cork two on one the best fast break team in the country shows why yeah, they, they turn defense into offense uh, it, a lot of times it's from steals but they're going to look to push and we mentioned it earlier Baylor was doing a good job getting back in transition on missed shots block shots off the backboard are a little bit more difficult because you're usually flattened out a little bit on your offensive end that three ball is good from Jalen Bridges and that's a good sign for Scott Drew he was just 9 of 31 for three in big 12 play before today Peavy tried for his second sports center top 10 like dunk, but he got fouled for his efforts. Creation of offense. How do you 
average less a little bit over 15 seconds per shot attempt where you get out and you run an opportunity and you share the basketball give and go back and forth force the defense to try to figure out what you're doing and able to finish Michael Peavy triple double earlier this year against Arizona State the third triple double in TCU history Kenrich Williams Kurt Thomas the other two the frogs are actually retiring Kenrich Williams number 20 next week the Horn Frogs right now are five of their last six from the field Generating some free throws here and they're, they're a level of aggressiveness. I think when you're on the road in particular in this conference You have to be aggressive You cannot be passive at the offensive end of the floor rich because if you are you're probably going to end up with Being hesitant playing on your heels making mistakes, but when you're aggressive you can deal with aggressive mistakes and PV He's kind of set the tone with the way that he's been driving and trying to be aggressive and they are jumping in passing lanes another Baylor turnover forced Bears have six turnovers in the first half. And TCU has taken advantage of most of them. Drive and kick. Ray J. Dennis. Float game off the window, no good. But Dennis gets the old miss. And a tough two by Ray J. Dennis. They get another offensive rebound, so they, they've turned it over, but. They've kind of been able to counterbalance that a little bit to stay in this game because their ability to get second chance points. Ooh. Uday inside, and the foul is going to go on Jacoby Walter, his second. They try to get there. Ernest Uday is on load. Walter just got hit by a brick wall. That's a good call. Good Walter, coach. I don't want to do that too much more, I mean, too many more times today, coach. That, that, that didn't feel so good. <laughs> and Walter will go to the bench with those two fouls. TCU inside Miller off the window. Beautiful execution on an out of bounds underneath, curling Miller to the ball side with a little big on big screen. Miller had 13 and 8 last year in their win on the road at Baylor. He's got eight points already in the first half. You mentioned coming off that double double, 21 and 11 at Oklahoma State. Langston Love, good to see him active and contributing in a Bears uniform. Came in as a top prospect at a high school, had an ACL right before the season started, and now two years later, finally looking like the player that they recruited. Yeah, and what he brings to the table is first of all he's got a great frame right like he, his upper body strength but he gets into the body and just as he did there on every drive he's looking to initiate that contact and you know as we talk about block charge rules and how it's been adjudicated this year and you have to have make sure you're set before you go up if you're aggressive and you can initiate that contact and that defensive player is moving with you you're going to get a lot of opportunities to get to the free throw line i love when you use sat words like adjudicated Impressive, right? <laughs> trying to impress you, Rich. I don't get to work with you too often, Rich. So I, I, I decided today I try to bring out my my A game vocabulary. It's been A plus so far, partner. Okay. More, I, I got some more. <laughs> got some more in my back pocket. We still got a long way to go. Two for two from the stripe for Langston Love. And I, I got it underneath the big hat. Like I got more. I got more SAT words under the, that guy's big hat. Let's go. TCU shooting fifty percent so far this first half. But the lead is just one for the Frogs. Miller. Nice move off Bridges. He's the first to double digits. I remember I was talking about Uday and how he rushed his postgame. You know who doesn't rush his postgame? Miller. And just beautiful job of reading the defense, pivoting, being strong with your base, fundamentally sound. Find your seam, find your angle. Inside. Misi, good catch, good finish. Eight points for the freshman Misi. Helps that rotation to step slow that time for TCU. Largest lead of the first half for either team has been four. Just another day that ends in Y in the Big 12. Lob pass defended by Dennis out of bounds. Ten on the shot clock for the Frogs when we return. 3.38 to go. Look at that guy. He's like, I'm on TV. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm on TV. What do you want to do? I want to do that. Are you sure that's your yeah, best move? I, I don't quite know what that is. Uh, I mean, that's your best move. You're like, I'm on. TCU's right. ball under their own rim. 
They've led most of this contest. They lead by one, three and a half to go in the first half. Looking to become just the second Big 12 team with two road wins. And that's a rare TCU turnover. It'll be Baylor basketball. They're waving it off, saying it's a shot clock violation. And mark one down for the officials. The officials got it right. Roger, one of the reasons Roger Ayers is the best. He comes over and looks at us and says, we got one right. Tongue firmly planted in cheek. Great. Inside again, that's been the story of the first half for the Baylor offense. It, it has been and none did a great job screening the back line and then allowing that rotation from Misi to come to the strong side and have the opportunity to draw the foul Now Eve Misi so many positive things to say about this 19 year old free throws unfortunately not one of them 49% this season Take that rich Hall. That's the reverse jinx Sean Farnham Two of the top teams in the SEC squaring off in our ESPN Sunday afternoon women's doubleheader Tennessee taking on Ole Miss at the pavilion coverage begins at 3 Eastern. How great was that LSU South Carolina oh, game the gosh. other night? High-level basketball uh, and you look across the country right now the Pac-12 by the way really strong in women's college basketball UCLA right up there inside the top five as well as Colorado Stanford Utah's a top 25 team. Oregon State's a top 25 team. This uh, Baylor women's team ranked 13th in the country. It's good. High level across across the country. Every game has been huge and competitive, just like we've seen on the men's side. After a Coles air ball, Baylor a chance to take the lead. Love shot fake. Bridges. Way off the mark. Back-to-back -back air balls. One was rushed. Now two and a half to go in the first. There's Tennyson. He has three triples this afternoon. Going for four. Instead, he moves it inside. Miller kind of picked off that pass and got it to go. And how about the hands, though, and the wherewithal to stay balanced? His base is so strong, Rich. I mean, to knock him offline, you you really got to get into him. And he's so good, even in a scramble situation like that, where the ball's getting deflected around, to gather and be strong underneath. That's what allows him to go up and finish. Misi, left hand, yes! And one! He is showing the arsenal this afternoon. And he's done everything he possibly can in this game. He's got... Double digits and points again already. That's his 10th time this season that he's been in double digits. I talked to a coach that played Baylor just a couple weeks ago, and they said, you know, he is elite at finishing around the basket, utilizing his athleticism, not just in dunk situations, but like a little bit of touch as well, and we saw it on that drive. And how about Eve Nisi? Two of three from the strike. Just raising that percentage up. You've got, you got Baylor a couple more times this year. By the end of the year, you're going to be saying, what a great free throw. <laughs> that one blocked out of bounds. None got a hand on it. 17 on the shot clock, about 40 to go in this first half. TCU looking for their second road win in Big 12 play and their second straight win in Waco. The crazy thing is there's not one team actually Texas Tech excuse me with their win today is the only team in the Big 12 with a winning record on the road. They're two and one. That's gonna be over back. Yep. Oh They say the ball was tipped Scott Drew can't believe it There is absolutely no no way that was tipped That was a head scratcher Roger said he got one right well uh. Top two by Jalen Bridges. He has seven, and it's Baylor's biggest lead of the afternoon, 36-33. A timeout call. He looked at him, he said, he, Roger told me, he goes, all right, I got you. But that's what great officials do, and Roger Ayers is one of the very best that we have in the game, and he did a great job communicating with Scott Drew, and then coming over and taking a little bit of heat from me and to tell me I was wrong. That one. Thrown by Xavier Cork to the Baylor bench. 
Another TCU turnover, that's their fourth. And, and we have hit our statute of, legend of limitations on praising the officials. We're done. We're, We're done. done. We've complimented them twice. It's over the limit. You're right. Contractually, we are done. Here comes Ray J. Dennis, 10 in goal. Contractually speaking, though, we've only had one on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Nunn working on Nelson. Langston Love, nice take, feathery touch. Getting the ball inside, being aggressive. You can see Baylor, they've struggled to find their rhythm from deep. So what have they decided to do? Let's drive lanes, let's find seams and attack. They've got 20 of their 38 have come in the paint. Miller, in and out. Peavy, blocked by Misi. And they're going to count the basket. Misi showing that athleticism on both ends of the floor. And the officials with under two minutes are able to look at this one. Now they can look at it the next stoppage of play, too, if they want to. If it's called, they can always go back. And I think it's the right call. I don't think there's a lot to, to go back and look. They can review that at the end of the half, and that's where they will do it. I will be tuning into the halftime right. report to hear what Dallin and Crispin have to say with my guy KC. Ten seconds to go. Last shot time for the Baylor Bears. Two to shoot. Misi's got it. How about that for end of half execution? Scott Drew called the play, and the Bears responded absolutely brilliantly. And you put the ball in the hands of the hottest player in the... In a bus accident nearly 100 years ago, ironically enough, that bus was heading to Austin, Texas, to take on the Texas Longhorns in the wake of their most recent game against TCU. What I was going to ask you is, what does TCU have to do to overcome this deficit and get back in this game? It's, it's lock up here. they got to secure the paint. I would collapse the defense a little bit. You want to extend out and be aggressive, but you've got to make sure you're in gaps and, and closing off the paint. And that's where the damage came by Baylor, and this is too easy. Bridges misses from under the basket. And that, that's too easy. I mean, just rip and go baseline, and there's nobody in help side rotation coming over. Very fortunate that they missed it. Ten on the, on the shot clock for Baylor. High arc in three, no good for none, and the rebound to Ernest Dude. As good as a percentage three-point shooting team as Baylor is, with the way they've played today, make them prove that they're going to be able to knock down shots on the outside. That's a turnover, first possession offensively for TCU. The lob, Misi couldn't quite handle that one, but he'll go to the line. On the flip side of things, too, for TCU at the other end of the floor, they want to get back in this game, you can't have empty possessions here in the second quarter. And there has been times that they have really struggled with taking care of the basketball. Only six turnovers in the first half. You say only. You say, Sean, that doesn't sound like, that sounds like a lot. They really could have 12 turnovers. They had 46 turnovers in two games. Now, they only had nine at Oklahoma State. But Jamie Dixon's team has to value the basketball and then run out and try to get ahead of Baylor's defense. And that starts with their defensive effort. You wouldn't know it by Jamie Dixon mean mugging for our cameras right there. But talking to him before the game today, he really likes his TCU team. He thinks they have a chance to be contenders in the league and to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. The key to being a contender in the Big 12 this year is trying to win on the road. I mean, look, it is hard, and we've, we've talked about it. We documented in the first half the today's schedule and how many home teams are winning and the fact that there's only one team in the conference that has a winning road record. But there's going to be a point in time here within the next three weeks and you and I were talking about this, where there's going to be separation based on the schedule and how things are playing out, but there's going to be some separation and there's going to be a top tier. If you want to be part of that top tier, you you got to find a way to win games like this where it's tight going to the half and you got to execute in the second 20 minutes. Avery Anderson takes advantage of the mismatch with Misi guarding him. He's got four. Eve Misi. Three or four of five from the line today, a 49% free throw shooter, and a career high 16 already. <laughs> Offensive rebound on the weak side by Jalen Bridges. That usually opens up an open look. That one wasn't for Ray J. Dennis, and they turn it over. 
the other point that I would stay on, like the idea of Jamie Dixon liking his team. There's a lot of coaches in this league that are league that's going to like their team all year long, but their record to the general public may not make it feel like they should be liking yeah. their team as much as they do. And then all of a sudden, you get to the NCAA tournament. I think the Big 12 is is really well positioned. Obviously, you have so many teams ranked in top, top 25. The the net rankings are very favorable. Joe Lenardi, I think, has 10 teams in right now from the conference. 10 on the shot clock. But you could struggle in this conference and be good enough to make a, a run to the second the second weekend. Do you think 7-11 and 11 at the end of conference play gets you an NCAA Probably. Probably. Have you seen the Pac-12 this year? They, not good. Not good at all. And here's what we're talking about. 13 of the 14 teams, only BYU, falls outside the strength of schedule inside of the top 14 in the country. And, and then you look at how close these games have been decided. It literally comes down to one or two possessions. And it's, it's, it's easy for us to say that. We're sitting here with a microphone. Here's Tennyson. Great shot fake. Pure stroke from Trey Tennyson. It's his fourth triple of the day. But it, but when you look at the box scores of every single game, and you see 79, 75, 70, 66, it's one costly turnover, one careless foul. A bad trip to the free throw right, line where you go 0 for 2. Like, that that's how tight things have been inside this conference all season long. What a dime, Jacoby Walter trying to feed the beast, Eve Misi, and Misi will go back to the line. And you know what I love about what Baylor is doing right now? And we get away from this in college basketball far too frequently. You got a player that's hot, and they, they stop going to him. You know, like that's that's one thing the NBA does a really good job. Like, oh, this guy's this guy's cooking. Oh, Luca has 18 in the first half, the first quarter. Maybe he could have a good game. Oh, he has 73. That's crazy. You know, I mean, that was last night, and the NBA we've seen a couple of those games this week. But Misi's the hot hand. He's been the matchup problem for TCU. Continue to go to him until TCU's defense has to make an adjustment, and that will open up the game for somebody else. Now, if they don't make the adjustment. You just keep feeding 21 and let him go to work. That's what he's been doing so far against TCU. They don't have an answer for him. He has a career high 17. Six of seven from the field for Eve Misi. And maybe more impressively, five for seven from the free throw line. And it's one thing to say feed the hot hand, but the execution of it and the buy-in from everybody on the floor. That's what that's what Baylor's done so far here in the early part of the second half. Five on the shot clock. PV. Attacks Misi. Can't get it to go. Knocked out of bounds. Baylor basketball. Let's see if they go right back to Misi this possession. They've done a good job moving them too. Setting on ball screens, then hard roll to the rim, ducking in. They've gotten them in on a couple of mismatches as well. So here comes Ray J. Dennis. Only two points this afternoon, but as we mentioned moments ago, six assists already on the afternoon. Bridges big to big passing and the domination continues from the freshman center Eve Misi and the unselfishness continues by every ball handler for Baylor a good job by Misi setting the screen and Jacoby Walter ran out to the corner and then that allowed that weak side seam to emerge for Bridges Misi this week suffering from strep throat then following that, got pink eye, missed the practice, was wearing glasses yesterday morning. They weren't even sure if he was going to play today. Is this his flu game? This is yeah. his Jordan flu game? I, I think trainer Dave Snyder saying to him, hey, we got to figure out a way how to get pink eye in the other eye <laughs> for the rest of the season. Well, what a performance we've seen so far. Five-point lead for 15th-ranked Baylor, looking to get off a two-game losing streak. There's the trap on Anderson. And Misi almost has the steal. 50-50 ball. It's going to stay with TCU. Great effort by both teams. Oh, no, they're giving it to Baylor. What did they, what, what they call it? A foul? They did call a foul on Avery Anderson. Jamie Dixon just got teed up. And now he's saying, for what? For telling you that you're terrible? Jamie Dixon. 
gets the technical foul. It looked like originally they were pointing to the ground as if this was just a loose ball foul. I mean, loose ball out of bounds. And both players just going for it. Neither player got a hand on the ball. Bridges can't convert the first of two technical free throws. Now, in all due respect, Anderson did completely fall. <laughs> but Jamie Dixon is hot. Yeah. And now that he's got one, you know, you got to have awareness the rest of the way. You've made your point. Didn't hurt you. Score still remains the same, but now his team has to respond with a little bit of fight at this end of the floor, and they got to figure out a way. You got to bring help right now uh, on Misi because he's scoring every single time down the floor. So Baylor retains possession after the technical free throw misses by Jalen Bridges, who's a 90% free throw shooter. And a jump ball called. It's going to be possession arrow TCU. And with 16 minutes to go in the second half. That good. Jacoby Walton, though, right there. Robert Dillingham can heat up in a second. One name we don't see on that list, Eve Misi. Yeah. Jonathan, if you're watching, <laughs> press rewind and start all over again. You're going to be impressed, I promise you. I, I would say that is conspicuously absent from yeah. that list, is Mr. Eve Misi, number 21. But you look at Jacoby Walter and Cody Williams. Two freshmen that have NBA size, athleticism, can put the ball on the floor. And just the future is so bright for that young man. And also number 21 as well, right next to him. Eve Misi working on a career afternoon. Coming in, his career best was 16. He already has 19. And we have 15.43 to go in the game. He has been an absolute force for the Baylor Bears. Biggest reason why they're up five right now. But even with as well as he's played, though, they have not created additional separation. They've played even here to start in the first four minutes of the second half. Here's Miller. Five on the shot clock. The floater doesn't go. And who else? Eve Misi clears it. Dennis surveying. Bounce pass on the back cut. And Walter will go to the free throw line. Beautiful screen, rescreen by Misi. Allowed Ray J. Dennis to get downhill. And a couple of times, that's like the third time in this game, Rich, that we have seen the back line of TCU's defense watching the ball and have been back cut. Twice in the first half, and then that time by Walter. Jamie Dixon exhorting his troops to block out on the free throws. It's the fundamental still, even at this elite level of basketball. Every level, the margin of success and failure shrinks individually and collectively Walter two for three from the line so far make it three for four for the 85% free throw shooter we'll see, we'll see if that made free throw Seeing the ball go through the hoop at the free throw line impacts how he can shoot the ball sometimes that for a shooter They see the ball go down. They can start to find a rhythm. He's just one of five shooting from the floor this afternoon This seven-point lead the largest of the day for the Baylor Bears Five minutes gone by in the second half. Ten on the shot clock. Nelson, step back. Got it. Even with that wonky rotation. And the shoulders were square. Feet were square. On the step back. Initiate a little bit of contact to bounce the defensive player back to give that spacing, that gap to get the shot off. His weave action eventually ends up with a screen from Misi. Here's Walter. Misi at the top of the key. Looked for the dribble handoff. Now five to shoot for the Bears. Kelly. Oh, there he is. That's Ray J. Dennis wearing the Kelly jersey with the Hezzy and the blow by. Good hands by Dennis, knocking it out of bounds, and it's Baylor basketball. Seems like it kind of gets a sense that this this next two minutes is going to be really important to get to the under-12 timeout for TCU. Can they settle themselves down, get some stops, tighten this game back up a little bit, or are they going to allow Baylor to go on a run here? 
Neither team has had an expansive run in this game. Langston Love, two feet in the paint. Back out to Dennis. Walter. No. And that's a man's rebound by Xavier Cork. Nelson. Chuck O'Bannon. Too strong. And now Baylor looking to fast break on the best fast breaking team in basketball. And he's got an M1 opportunity. My son's a golfer, my youngest son, and I said, you know, sometimes the best shots that you love to watch on the PGA Tour are the ones from the trees. That's one from the trees right there. I mean, that, that, we'll celebrate it. But, I mean, that is an off-balance, a wing and a prayer, better to be lucky than good sometimes, make by Ray J. Dennis. Turn it into a stat sheet stuffing kind of an afternoon for number 10 in gold, Ray J. Dennis. He now has six points to go along with those six assists and four rebounds as well. He's played great. And we mentioned this early in the, in the broadcast. You know, you talked to him and said, hey, how have you been able to come in here and find your rhythm so quickly? He said, you know, I'm a multiple, multi-time transfer. A lot of kids are today in college basketball. But he said, because of my experience in the transfer the first time, I knew the work I had to put in to try to get up to speed and make this thing work this year. And he's put in that work, and it shows out. Miller has a mismatch with Ray J. Davis on him. And they didn't, they didn't get the ball to him, and Ray J. just switched off of him. Nelson, step back off the window. That's nine for Jameer Nelson. Amazing that he barely had any D1 offers coming out of high school. He was a baseball player, even though his dad was a 14-year NBA pro. I miss seeing multi-sport athletes. Look at wide open underneath. Oh, John Runa couldn't handle it. Now here comes the TCU fast break, Woo! and an easy two with the flush from Peavy. And Peavy can elevate. That's 10 for Peavy and a quick timeout call. 12.26 to go. TCU. About Iowa State, 79-75. They made 14 threes in that game. Trey King had 21. Can you 12 turnovers turned into 15 points? Yeah, talk about turnovers. How about Houston? They had 11 steals that led to 25 points for them as they routed Kansas State. Keep saying it all season long. Every team's going to have a three-game losing streak at some point, and every team's going to face back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back top 25 teams at some point. How Maybe you, even more than that. How do you respond? That's the key. Yeah, one-game winning the, streaks, right? The mental approach is the next-game mentality, next play, next game, right? It's easier said than done, and especially with the noise that can surround these young men from social media, from people on campus. What's wrong? I thought you guys were great, man. Like, Baylor, you were in the top 10. What's going on? Like, how'd you lose a couple games? It's the Big 12. It's the best conference in America. And it has been for the last decade. Some foul trouble for the Frogs, Sean. Sean Tennyson, or uh, Trey Tennyson, their best three-point shooter at the bench. Four fouls. And now the rest of the way, Baylor shooting free throws on every subsequent TCU foul. And given the fact that Baylor's already shot 19 free throws and TCU's only attempted two. And the byproduct of that is aggressiveness. Like, Baylor has been the more aggressive team. They've been the team that has consistently played from the inside. And that has benefited them. Great defense. The sneaky steal by Jacoby Walter. Up ahead, Loner finishes. Baylor's connecting now, Sean. Jameer Nelson Jr. taking advantage of the mismatch. The foul is going to go on Josh Ojanwuna. Place has got a little wild, got a little loud. The students there. Cancer Ward said, hey, you guys plan on, uh, you want to decorate some shoes for me? I'm going to wear tomorrow. Uh, big initiative, obviously, with Coaches versus Cancer this week and the NABC coaches. 
their buy-in to raise awareness. And every time we talk about cancer, of course, at ESPN, we've got the Z Foundation. And that makes me think about Dick Vitale, who has not been able to call a game this year. But you talk about Warriors in the fight against cancer. What Dick Vitale has done, will continue to do, is maybe more impactful than the man that has promoted college basketball better than anyone ever has and ever will. And he's got his gala that's coming up down in Florida. And if you want information on it, you can visit the website, v.org. Dickie V. Gala. And, of course, this is the update that we have from Dickie V. Yeah, we love you, Dick. We know he's watching. He's a basketball junkie, whether he's watching at home or calling a game in an arena near you. I hope that voice rests, and I hope we get to hear you back calling games on the sideline very soon. But Three on the shot clock. Well, you know this, Rich. You called many games with Dick. And he's just an absolute warrior in the fight against cancer and, and a warrior in the way that he's approached his own battle against cancer. I, I've often told him he is the reason why I fell in love with college basketball in the first place. And yet his legacy as a gladiator in the fight to end children's cancer is going to be an even bigger legacy that he leaves long after his days are done. Uh, Jameer Nelson, by the way, uh, that was a, one of the rare breakdowns we've seen from Baylor defensively. And they kind of, they all kind of went with the ball fake in the past, but he, as the body shifted, they thought he was going one way, and he created a straight line drive right to the hoop. So Miller leads him with 12. Nelson has 11. But with that dunk, the lead is back to eight for Baylor. Yeah, the rotations have best just been a step slow on the back line. There's been multiple times. Watch the screen and then the roll, and just no communication. Miller's guarding nobody. On the screen, he doesn't guard the ball, and he lets his man go, and in doing so, it's a lob to the rim and an easy finish. And the backcourt for Jamie Dixon's Horn Frogs riddled with fouls. Tennyson already on the bench with four, now Avery Anderson with three. In the free throw disparity, I think a lot of people look at it and go, oh. Something off there. I mean, one team shot 20, the other one's only shot two. But if you're watching this game, you see how they've approached it. And in particular, a bulk of those free throws have come here in the second half. Because they've made it a point of emphasis coming out of the break is, hey, we're not shooting it well from the outside. We are, we are really hurting them on the inside with Nisi. And now others are stepping up in that role as Nisi checks back into the game. TCU for their last five from the field. Make it four of six. Offensive rebound, Peavy off the window. Nice play by Zero and Gray, Micah Peavy. Well, Jamie Dixon won't argue about a call there. I think that's probably legitimate. Got to be careful after that tee that he got popped with. That's where the game has changed so much from like when I played. And I, I, I don't want, like being the old man, you know, I'm 46 years old. Back in the day in 1997, we never did that. But we didn't. These guys now, these guards, they're practicing these alternative releases that shield away from shot blockers high off the glass. Nine points, seven dimes for Ray J. Dennis this afternoon. That foul is going to be on Langston Love. Here's another look at Dennis. Little dipsy do with the left hand. I love it. You know, just shield. Feel where the defense is. Know that there's nobody there. Extend that off arm out and away from your body. Ray J. Dennis only had two points in 35 minutes in that last second loss at Texas. And something we really haven't touched on. Baylor got an extra couple of days of practice this week. They haven't played a game during the weekday. So after that Texas loss, they got extra practices in. In prepping for this game against TCU is that a good thing or a bad thing when you've lost a couple games back to back right because you, you could you could lose yourself in your mind or you can really look at it and say hey we got to get just a little bit better a little bit better gets us a win at Texas a little bit better we could be a team that can compete for a Big 12 championship this year and they've done a pretty good job of that but I'm gonna tell you TCU a couple of times has looked like maybe Baylor's gonna pull away They've always come up to tighten it back up within seven. No team has been able to go on a run greater than seven points so far this afternoon. There's been no double-digit runs for either team. If one gets a ten-point run here in the final eight minutes, they might win the game. That foul was on Avery Anderson, so four fouls 
on each of the starting backcourt members of this TCU team. Anderson and Tennyson. None with the first free throw. Coming up at 8.30 Eastern on ABC, rivalry rolls on. LeBron and the Lakers squaring off against Steph and the Warriors to cap a triple header. Coverage begins with the countdown crew at 8 Eastern. Torian Prince, former Baylor Bear, averaging 10 points a game for those Lakers. And the Lakers need to kind of get things going here. They've fallen behind in the Western Conference. Ironically, the counterparts that share the building, the Clippers, one of the hottest teams in the NBA. Off balance, tough shot by Jameer Nelson Jr. Same thing we're talking about the other end, right? Smaller guards, utilizing the glass, and, and the consistency in, in what they work on and the skill development on mismatch underneath. Inside, Tennyson has to stand there with those four fouls, though. Up ahead, Coles. Low percentage shot. Here comes Love up the right side. With Tennyson with four fouls, you go right to Misi, and he's just got to be strong with it. Here's Bridges, an easy two off the dime from Langston Love. And now the crowd's into it again. Ten to shoot. Nelson flipped it up, got fouled by Nisi, his first. Flippers from guards have been the key play in the last couple of minutes. I love it when the guards understand and it, it's clean. It is nice. We, we literally walked all the way to the top to see what the view is like from the very last row. We went to the suites. We went to the, 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 the big the big chairs that are up behind us. Yeah. You know, the private the private food areas. Like we, we did the whole tour that they have here and they didn't leave one thing missing. They have a sensory room. So if you have sensitivity with autism or, or to sound, that there's a room that you can take a break and a reprieve here in this facility. Uh, they've just done a tremendous job. The coach's offices, the practice facility, still in phase two. But phase one is pretty. I can't wait to see what phase two looks yeah. like when it's done. This was no fixer-upper to steal a line oh, from hey. Chip and Joanna Gaines. Big-time Baylor Bear fans. Seven on the shot clock for Baylor. Here's none. Love's going to have to put it up. And a good defensive stand by the Frogs out of that timeout. And that's what they can do. You know, you, you get to the free throw line. Now you go back down the other end of the floor. You get a stop. This game has been pretty. Oh, hey, look at that. That's your there's, guy. Yeah, there's, there's good old Chip. As we said, big time. Baylor fans going, well, going also, all the way back to the Ferrell Center days. <laughs> All, all those of, years ago. All of last year. <laughs> uh, actually, all of two months ago. But you know the amazing thing is? They're every bit the part, though, of kind of the image of Waco, oh, the yeah. tourism department. I mean, they have made it. My mom and my sister flew to Waco over the summer, I think, last year. And they just want to come down and go to Magnolia Farms. Scott Drew has made this a basketball destination, and Chip and Joanna have made Waco the same thing. There's a big three by Chuck O'Bannon, his first points of the afternoon. It is great as Baylor's done a lot of great things. They got the ball in the paint. They've gotten to the free throw line. The lack of separation starts to apply pressure to TCU. I mean, to Baylor if TCU continues to climb back in this game. Hit a three pointer here and watch how Baylor responds at that point in time. TCU, five of their last six from the field, and we've got ourselves a one point ball game. 14 for PV. They're shooting 61% here in the second half. They weathered the early storm of Baylor going into the paint. They extended out their lead to 10. Jamie Dixon's team does not foul trouble. Tennyson's on the bench. He's not out of the floor, able to knock down shots. Anderson's gone to the bench. That's fine. Nelson comes up huge so far to start the second half. He's at 14 now. Miller's got 12. Peavy's got 14. They have four guys in double figures, and that balanced scoring approach of TCU it makes it hard just to take one guy away. And out of the timeout, Peavy commits the foul, his second. And what's interesting is if you've never seen this TCU team before you're watching right now, you're saying, oh, they're number one in the nation at fast break points. They must have a ton today, and they really don't. No, they're actually getting scored 
outscored in fast break points today. And that's yeah, that's the key to me, I think, for the Big 12. When when you can't do what you do really, really well, can you still win? If you're going to be a top half finisher in this conference, that's the challenge. Because it's easy when 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 your identity and what you want to do is is present and everything's flowing the way you want it to be. It's 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 much easier to win games. Yeah. But in this conference, with the scouting, the athleticism, the players, you're not going to have that every single night. And more often than not, you're going to have to find another way to, to win. And although Baylor is usually effective in two-point range, they are most effective in three-point range, and that's not something they're doing well today. But here's Love with the steal and the flush. Inside. Uday for two. What a good answer. I wanted to see how TCU was going to respond. A careless turnover that leads to an easy run out for Baylor. They get TCU. Doesn't waver. Coach Dixon calls the play, and they punched it right into the boats. Block. Here's been the best player in the game, 21. Now Misi at the foul line. They left him. Bridges. A defended two. Here comes TCU. Looking to tie the ball game. And they get a foul. Timeout on the floor. Langston Love turning defense into offense. Yeah, great job. Watch, he leaves the block in Uday. And he just shoots the gap. And what's Love got to do with it? An easy finish. Above the rim. Fantastic. And Miller will go to the free throw line with an opportunity to tie this game. This is Big 12. Welcome, everybody. If this is the first time you're watching the conference, I'm going to ask you why. Like ESPN, we've got the big sports center thing. Watch this. That should be the mantra for every single Big 12 basketball game. Watch this because it's going to be tight. It's going to be hostile environments with great crowds, high-level athletes. Emmanuel Miller hearing it from the Foster Pavilion faithful after that free throw miss. He makes the second one though. Well, we'll extend it out pressure here. I don't think this is real designed to create turnovers necessarily. Going right at Uday. And well defended. Fast break opportunity. Broken up by Dennis, but they're going to call him for the foul. That's going to be the third on Ray J. Dennis. Scott Drew saying, well, didn't that just happen at my end of the floor? I, I just, both ways, it'd be fine. Good job by Peavy. And, and the reach-in. Check that. They're going to call Jaden Nunn. Yeah, I think that. Foul. Yeah, I do think it was on Nunn. If you're looking at that and you're thinking that it was going to be on Dennis, on the replay, you're going to say that's not a foul. It's the swipe that happens beforehand. Uh, missed free throws. Remember what we talked about. The difference of winning and losing, because the margin is so thin in this conference, it can be stepping to the free throw line and not completing. They be, they've missed two out of the last three from the strike. Maybe just 59% from the line on the season, and he missed them both. And the crowd loves it. You know what else we were talking about earlier today? This home crowd makes a difference for Baylor. So he missed two in a row, and that's why we've got cupcakes. Everybody gets cupcakes, even that man. Chip loves it. Chip, you want cupcakes? Probably, he has probably a bakery. Yeah, you don't have to go cupcakes. to Magnolia Bakery by the silos to get cupcakes. You come to Foster Pavilion and you'll get a couple. Who sponsors the cupcake giveaway? <laughs> that's what I want to know. Baylor with the ball in a two-point lead, looking to snap a two-game losing streak in the Big 12. Uh, by the way, it's been confirmed Magnolia does sponsor the cupcake giveaway. They sponsor most things around here. Five on the shot clock. If they'd like to sponsor Dennis. my living room, I'm good with that too. <laughs> <laughs> How much fun is this, Rich? Come on. College basketball. High ball screen and then diving hard and ducking in. And establishing a low post presence. He, he got to the free throw line. He's making his free throws. I think you get him involved if you're Baylor down the stretch and go back to him. 
Now TCU on the other side, I, I think you, you, you just continue to drive it. I mean, that's where Peavy's had his success. That's where Nelson has had their success. Continue to try to attack off the bounce, but you've got to do it on a ball reversal. You can't do it first side. So you've got to try to get second side offense. That means at least one ball reversal to the opposite side of the floor. Get that defense to rotate a little bit. See if they overextend their pressure and you can drive it. One possession ball game coming up on three and a half to go. Nelson straight to the dish. That was a great job of the on-ball screen. Took it away and then just drove it. Utilizing the pressure of the defense against them. Nelson has 16. And Nisi looks like he's hobbled a little bit. 21 in gold. Here he is. He's okay. He's okay enough to dump in another bucket. 21 points for the freshman. Yeah, so he, he hurt his hand. He's grabbing his left hand. But a good job going back to what we just talked about. It's been a long time since yeah. he's made his presence felt in this game. O'Bannon from the corner. And that is a good memory for TCU fans. Last year in the Ferrell Center in Waco, Chuck O'Bannon hit a game-winning three point that last one huge and here we are tied with under three minutes to go four of Baylor's five big 12 games have been decided by five or fewer five of TCU's six games have been decided by five or fewer we're tied with two and a half to go Macy's on the bench love Leading scorer in Big 12 play for the Bears. Forced it up and in. That's just pure strength and will to get that one off the backboard and in. Every game, a rock fight in the Big 12. This one, no different. Two minutes to go. And a timeout call. TCU is five for their last five from the field to come back from a 10-point deficit. It, it, the evolution of the game, the players are much more skilled and understand catch and shoot, how to play, how to space the floor, and it creates better fluidity at the offensive end. If it comes down to free throws, Baylor 18 for 26 today. TCU 5 for 8. Five on the shot clock for the Frogs. Nelson's got the mismatch that he wants. And he's got a hot hand, and that hot hand continues. They get 18. that switch. Rich, I mean, that, that's what we were just talking about. You get the switch and you go. Find the matchup that you feel you have an advantage, and how can you make it work for you every single possession? We are tied again. That time, Baylor went strong to the hole, and it was Langston Love who got fouled and will go to the line. The TCU has gotten this switch, and you see the confidence in Nelson. He's not looking to pass the ball. He's looking to go through and finish. So what happens is now when you get that switch, what do you do? Because if he's going to continue to play with that bounce, then you've got to help, okay, which means you could leave a three-point shooter. TCU is three of five from beyond the arc. You're going to look out on the floor right now and say, well, we can't leave Tennyson because he's going to hurt you, right? As Misi checks back into the game. But you've got to bring help on that drive somewhere, Rich. You cannot let Nelson get that deep in the paint with as confident as he's playing. He's up to 18, and he's 8 of 10 shooting. It's a season high for Jamil Nelson Jr. And look at that. Off the free throw miss, Langston Love chases it down and gives Baylor an extra possession. We might be talking about that one in a minute and 20 seconds from now. Counting down to one minute to go. What a take by Ray J. Dennis. And all because they got an offensive rebound. Instead of being down by one, you're down by three, TCU, with one minute left to go. O'Bannon, why not? He's been a hero oh, in Baylor before, and he's trying to be a hero again. CLB. His dad's in Tulsa smiling right now, I promise you that. Tied at 76. Baylor's already had two overtime games in the Big 12. 13-second differential.
check that 22 second differential. Tap back, Tennyson grabs it. Shot, Shot clock. clock is off. And TCU has the ball and a chance to win on the road in the Big 12. And Jamie Dixon calling out one final play without calling a timeout. Here comes the screen. They're going to try to get the switch. Watch. Seven. Five to shoot. Miller does. It's in and out. One second left. It's good if it goes. And we're going to overtime in Waco. I love it. You, you and I circled this game. We thought it was going to be great. It has been. There's, There's no doubt about it. Three for four from beyond the arc. Nine points. And huge in the late, late stages of the second half. The sixth oldest player in Division I basketball. And these are the moments that he came back for. TCU wins the opening tap in overtime. Here's Tennyson with four fouls. Nelson's been the best player in the second half for TCU. And he banks one in from the top of the key. 21 for Nelson. How huge has he been since halftime? 17 points in the second half and now overtime for Jameer Nelson Jr. And here comes TCU in transition. Good hands in transition defense by Langston Love. Yeah, I think, you know, as much as they want to play fast, if you look there, I, I with as well as they've executed in their half-court set, I, I know they get the ball out of bounds, but I'm going to pull that out. You've got a three-point lead to start. Let's make sure you get another great possession on the road. How about the Horned Frogs? 34% on the year from three-point range coming in, and they are 8 for 16 from beyond the arc this afternoon. And Tennyson controls. He's got four of those eight threes. Nelson. Good D off the catch. Eight to shoot. Tennyson does. Had good defense by Baylor, but an offensive rebound, and PV doesn't cash it in. Great tap back by Miller. What a big play that was, just Veteran. tapping that out, just knowing that everybody for Baylor had collapsed to the paint, tip it out over the top of their head, give your guys an opportunity to get it. Seven on the clock, left-hand layup, and Jameer Nelson Jr. gets fouled and will go to the line. As great as Misi was in the first half, Jameer Nelson Jr. has been that in the second half and now into the overtime period for TCU. He has been aggressive. He has played with great composure. He has been disruptive. And he's played his best game in a TCU uniform this season. 21 points. Looking to add to that from the strike. I mean, he averaged 20 a game last year. Yeah. And this is his first 20-point game he's had in a TCU uniform. Off the mark for the 70% free throw shooter, Jameer Nelson Jr. And now O'Bannon on the floor for Jamie Dixon. Rattles around and goes home. 22 for Jameer Nelson. And this ties TCU's largest lead of the afternoon, Sean. Dennis lost it. Stolen by Nelson. That, that feels like a big, big turnover. You know, you're trailing by four. You want to make sure you get a good shot attempt and you don't even get one. Second in the conference in steals per game, Jameer Nelson. Doing it at both ends of the floor. And Walter gets fouled by Ude. That is a great foul. Because that was going to be a throw ahead and an easy dunk. Instead, you're going to go to the free throw line. And Walter struggled today. And, and, you know, great players can struggle, but they find their way out of it. He's one of eight shooting this afternoon. Three of four from the free throw line. He has not had as large as an impact as he has had in the majority of the games that Baylor has played. TCU has done an excellent job of staying with him on the perimeter. And outside of, he made his first shot, so he's missed his last seven that he's attempted. And they haven't given him a seam to drive and get to the rim. Free throws good from the freshman Walter. Baylor's been led by fellow freshman Eve Misi. 
with a career high 21 this afternoon. Walter got them both. TCU, a two point lead and the ball coming up on three minutes to go in OT. I'd like to see Miller drive from here. Miller, two feet in the paint, tough two from Eman. He's so good at going left or right from that elbow. He's going to try to jab step you and see if your weight shifts, and then he's looking to attack. He has 15. The TCU lead is up to four. Dennis lost it for a moment. Now he's got it in the corner, and he cans the three from the baseline. 17 for Ray J. Dennis, and it's a one-point TCU lead. Miller checked by Bridges. Veteran on veteran. And it bounces around and out. Another big rebound. And Chuck O'Bannon contributes again. You, know, you look at the box score and you're going to look at guys and see minutes played and all of that, stats, rebounds, whatever. How about impact on a game? Tell me that number five in gray hasn't been the most one of the most impactful players on this afternoon's game. Nice tap away by Ude. TCU up three, a chance to extend. Coming up on 90 seconds to go in overtime. Miller, aggressive to the hole and got the foul called. And Emmanuel Miller will go to the line. Clutch threes all over the place, Farnham. Yeah, big, big plays. Uh, Dennis looked like he was going to lose it. Instead, he gets his feet set. He's the first shooter out in the gym two hours before the game. Hasn't shot it well. Big moment there. Catch, shoot, get your feet squared, and able to knock it down. And then O'Bannon at the other end of the floor. We've talked about his three-point work. How about his work on the glass here? An offensive rebound. Sticks with it after missing the first and able to finish. Chuck O'Bannon had 25 points against Old Dominion and was 6 for 7 from three-point range. He was 4 for 20 coming in in every other game. And he's got three triples today. He loves himself some Waco. <laughs> 16 for Emmanuel Miller. And I also say this about Macy. I love the hustle there. But as you get that ball, you've got to throw it towards your basket. He threw it backwards towards TCU's basket, and that's what allowed Miller to get the ball and immediately attack. If he just throws it towards his end, even if it goes out of bounds, that's fine. Instead, it's a foul and extra points. Largest lead of the afternoon for the Horned Frogs. Looking for their second road win in the toughest league to win on the road. Misi, 23 for him. How about that pass by R.J. Davis? Or R.J. Davis. They just, two guys on him, and he, right? You're like, okay, so you, you play on the road against number 15 Baylor. You get to go home and play against Texas Tech. Well, how are they doing this year? Right. Yeah. Oh, and then after that, you get Texas. Oh, okay, cool. That'll be fun. Accounting for the games earlier today in the Big 12, home teams are 32 and 14 in league play. That's by far the best winning percentage of any major conference. But right now, TCU looking to buck that trend. Up three on the road with the ball, 50 seconds to go in OT. Here's Miller. No gang rebounded, and Misi comes away with it. A three to tie for Baylor. 13 seconds differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Dennis has got four fouls on Misi. You don't need the three. Dennis goes for the two. High off the glass and in. And a timeout called with 20. Right. You're like, okay, so you, you play on the road against number 15 Baylor. You get to go home and play against Texas Tech. Well, how are they doing this year? Right. Yeah. Oh, and then after that, you get Texas. Oh, okay, cool. That'll be fun. Accounting for the games earlier today in the Big 12, home teams are 32 and 14 in league play. That's by far the best winning percentage of any major conference. 
But right now, TCU looking to buck that trend. Up three on the road with the ball, 50 seconds to go in OT. Here's Miller. No gang rebounded, and Misi comes away with it. A three to tie for Baylor. 13 seconds differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Tennyson's got four fouls on Misi. You don't need the three. Dennis goes for the two. High off the glass and in. And a timeout called. With 20. It's about one second per bounce. Point seven left. Another look at a wild recap. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. TCU practices this play. Tennyson from beyond half court. It was on target, but just a little bit short. And how does double over T sound, Sean Farno? I got nowhere to go. <laughs> I'm going to have a cupcake, and we're going to be good. Off the mount, the mat, there's been no 10 count so far. Well, we welcome you back to overtime presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Tied at 88. Nelson lost it, got it back, and it's good off the window. 24 for Jameer Nelson Jr. And he has come alive in the second half and beyond. 10 of 13 shooting. Just so efficient. I try to get Misi back involved here early just to get his confidence back after he missed that shot. No doubt. Here's Misi with the ball, 21 in goal. Freshman big with 23 points. Bridges finds him. And Misi shakily dunks that one. Yeah, he wasn't going to leave it to chance by just shooting it. Doesn't matter if it rattled in or not. It went down. Still counts as two. But really smart to get him involved. Next play mentality. Shake it off. Go ahead and finish. One minute gone by in double OT. Where do you think Jamie goes? I think he, in, in, with this lineup, you're looking at Nelson to drive. I mean, that's been the guy, right? Good defense. Good hands by Dennis. Almost turned it over. Nelson step back. Tough three-pointer guarded by Dennis, and it's a shot clock violation. That, that was just, you know, shot clock heave. To me, you play through Nelson and you play through Miller right now. And then off of those two, you look for O'Bannon. But Miller or Nelson have to be involved in the play. How about Ray J. Dennis's afternoon? 19 points and 10 assists for his first double-double as a Baylor Bear. Here's Dennis right on cue. 21. 20 and 10, not too bad of a night. Baylor back on top by a deuce. Catch and release, PV from inside the free throw line. What an excellent job releasing from the weak side and seeing a gap that he could just slide into. They went to double the paint, and that left PV open, and he moved. He didn't stand on the outside. Now under three minutes to go in double overtime. Here's Steele. Five to shoot for Baylor. Bridges, short, Nisi the offensive rebound, but it's almost stolen away, and Sean Farnham comes up with it. Good hands, partner. I got you, Rich. I'm dialed in as much as the players are right now to this game, man. This is fun. This is it. We, we sit here, and we're, we're lucky, right? We get paid to sit courtside for amazing basketball across this country. There's games like this that you get on your schedule, and sometimes they just play out as close as you anticipate that it will. And you just sit there and say, I don't care how long we got to stay. This is special. Taylor with the ball. Tied at 92. Another. Full denial by PB to keep Ray J. De Dennis from getting the ball. Two on the shot clock. Nowhere to go for love. And it's a shot clock violation. Both defenses bearing their teeth. It's both defenses, but it's a little bit too as well at the offensive end of the floor fatigue. You know, I mean, as we get into double overtime here, a lot of minutes have been logged by a lot of the players out on the floor. 
can you mentally stay dialed in and have awareness of what the shot clock is looking like? You can't let the shot clock get under five and not have awareness that you need to get something going towards the basket. Jamie Dixon pouring over his call sheet from his back pocket. What does TCU have in store? Coles left alone. No, the rebound to Love. And here comes Baylor, Walter up the right side. Two minutes to go in double overtime. No drag screen, he rejects it. We've seen that before from Dennis, but it's short that time. Battle for the ball, Bridges. Here's Walter, and he got fouled on the second effort. What I love about what Jacoby Walter just did there, he hit the three going to send us into double overtime, right? He pops out on the offensive rebound. You look for maybe a kick out three, good opportunity to get it, but the closeout was so hard, he didn't hesitate. He just straight line drove that, got contact, and got himself to the free throw line. Now Jacoby Walter. Five of six, now six of seven from the charity strike. And we've talked about it a few times today. In the Big 12, total close games, almost every game you play, it could come down to one or maybe two free throws. And 18-year-old Jacoby Walter, ice in his veins, knocks them both down in the second extra session to give Baylor a two-point lead. Here's Emmanuel Miller. Bannon's been a hero. He thought about it, too. Here comes the crowd. Ten on the shot clock. And Roger Ayers says it's going to stay TCU basketball. Great effort by Dennis. Seven to shoot for the Frogs. Now you got to execute quickly. So you have to, uh, to me, right now, I'm, I want Miller at that elbow area. If you can get him there on a post-up on the block or at the elbow area, that's where you want him. Five to shoot. Nelson calls his own number. Too strong. Offensive rebound and a foul's call. That's going to be against Langston Love. That's his second two free throws now for TCU. Nisi on the closeout. They got the switch they wanted, but not enough time for him to go off the bounce and attack. And then Love on the weak side swiping down. Since PB to the free throw line, PB is two of four at the foul line today. And you look at who's on the floor for Jamie Dixon, and it is veteran experience, one through five, including PV. Conversely, Scott Drew's relying on two freshmen in double overtime right now: Jacoby Walter and Eve Misi to bring this one home. PV has 18, and we're tied again at 94. Counting down to one minute to go in double overtime. Bridges almost lost it. One minute left, 12 on the shot clock. Misi rolls, corner three, Walter. Too short, and a big rebound by Nelson, but he hits the deck hard. It's out of bounds, and it's going to be Baylor basketball. What an effort by Jameer Nelson Jr. Though. Bodies all over the floor. Hope, hopefully he's okay. And that was a hard, hard foul. He was cracking back in to try to get it from the guard position. Uday was the one that actually undercut him. and caused the ball to go out of bounds, and they both... Shaking up here a little bit. I have no problem with the same time cleaning the floor, but watch this on the left-hand side of your screen. Boom. Bodies hitting the floor. Physical exhaustion. Give, give everything you have left in the tank. It's been one of those games. Out of bounds. Brett Smith says TCU basketball. And they'll review it, though. Yeah, they're going to the scores table. Right, this is how we want to execute here. 
defensively. What are our matchups? Who's guarding who? What action do we have to take away? You're likely in a one-stop moment right now if you're Baylor. One stop, and then you'll have an opportunity to win the game. If you don't get a stop, you're going to have to come down to score. Peavy dribbled off his foot. Miller almost lost it. Ball has Vaseline on it in double OT. Ten to shoot. Look for the drive. Now Nelson lost the handle. Five to shoot. Coles. Working on Dennis. Dennis got the steal. Cole got it back. And a shot clock violation. Right, that, that's why you talk about your defensive matchups and what you want to up top. That would get Misi going downhill. I think the key to that, too, is having Jacoby Walter opposite for a potential skip pass over the top. As a threat. Here we go. If the defense gets pulled in, you, you throw it diagonally across. Last shot time for Baylor in double overtime. Seven seconds left. Dennis is going at five. Step back. Dennis for the win. It's off the mark. And can you say triple overtime? Jamie Dixon wanted a push off. It was. <laughs> Traded so far this afternoon. We welcome you back to back to back to overtime. Presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. The tip goes to Trey Tennyson and TCU. We were tied at 76 at the end of regulation. We're tied at 94 after two overtimes. Nelson. Too strong. Oh, and Walter took a shot to the face. And that's going to be a foul, but that was inadvertent. He's trying to track down that rebound. There's it's Bailey. Jamie Dixon's got to be careful. He was out at center court. And, and listen, Uday wasn't trying to do anything there, right? I mean, no. he just, he, he, and again, slow motion when you slow it down, you look at it versus real speed. Real speed, that's pretty close to, I'm trying to get the rebound and I'm just lunging and reaching to get there. But it was contact to the head. The officials went back, determined excessive. Two big free throws to start triple overtime. And how about the freshman Jacoby Walter? Struggling from the field, two for ten, but nails from the free throw line. Eight for nine today to go along with six boards and four assists. Those two free throws give Baylor a two-point lead, and now because of the flagrant foul, they have possession. The wear and tear of this conference. I mean, just every single game, it's a fight. Up next for Baylor on the road at UCF. And a game against Iowa State. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Walter. Working on Uday. He's got a mismatch. Three to shoot. Love. The floater is good. And Uday playing great defense on Walter. Just throws the ball back and Love splits it and gets to that floater game. And we saw them practicing that floater at the end of their warm-ups today. There's Tennyson. Four fouls on him. He's been silent in the second half and beyond. And a foul on the floor. That's going to go on Jacoby Walter, his fourth. You and I noted it in their warm-ups towards the end. They worked on just getting to that Big 12 logo and the little floater game. And, you know, you can get to that spot, and if you can knock down that shot on a consistent basis, coaches feel like that's a 70% make. The mid-range is not a lost arc. It doesn't matter if it's a 70% make right now. It just matters if it's a make. They trip over the time and he's taking it. Tennyson, one for two. Big rebound by Langston Love. Free throws will be a factor. And it's a 10-second violation. And Jamie Dixon's going to have to be careful again. Brooks Wells right up in his mug. And the coaches, you think Jamie Dixon, as competitive as they come, right? Uh, he's fiery passion. 
That's Baylor's 15th turnover. Jaden Nunn set to check back in for the freshman Walter. Both teams have two timeouts. Both teams in the double bonus. Possession arrow in favor of the homestanding Bears. And now Jacoby Coles comes in for Ernest Uday. And I like how the coaches are subbing right now. Do you guys know what they're doing? They're subbing one at a time and like a little bit of a pause in between to buy more time for their play And everybody's getting a little bit extended rest here out on the floor an extra 30 seconds of just Breathe exhale recenter refocus now go execute Jamie Dixon calling elbow. Let's see what that is for the Horn Frogs with eight on the shot clock Miller No No whistle and Ray J. Dennis brings it up for Baylor. Three-point Bears lead. Dennis. And he got fouled on the floor. And Peavy tried to make the steal at the top of the key. He looks flat exhausted. And that's his third foul. Interesting here. Small thing. Baylor huddled immediately. TCU's players all breathing. They didn't circle up. They didn't talk. Everybody just got to the spot on the free throw line. They were just taking breaths. Baylor came together right there. See if that matters anything. It's a fatigue factor. You got multiple guys on the floor grabbing their shorts, bending over right now. Ray J. Dennis has 22 points as Trey Tennyson checks in for Chuck O'Bannon and Ernest Uday will come on for Jacoby Coles. So situational substitutions as well. well Offense for defense and vice versa. Uh, the fouls. You know, Tennyson's got four. Uday's got four. So you're trying to extend out the game and maybe give you an opportunity to have better success at the offensive end and keep them from fouling out at the defensive end. Dennis off the mark on the second free throw. Nerves. And wear and tear. All factors in triple overtime. Peavy. Tennyson on the move. Got it. Smooth stroke from Trey Tennyson. His first field goal since the second half. Now they, they didn't obviously because no foul. You've got two guys on the floor with four. Can you attack him? Baylor with the ball in a two-point lead. Here's none. And Micah Peavy with the dig, and he's whistled for his fourth foul. So Jaden Nunn will step to the free throw line, a 69% free throw shoot. The transfer junior from Flint, Michigan, by way of VCU. Why shoot free throws late in practice, middle of practice, right after conditioning. In and out. Langston Love, another huge rebound. That is Scott two, Drew wants to call timeout. That's two offensive rebounds that he's gotten in overtime. I think it's the first overtime, if I'm not mistaken. And then now in the third overtime, it's all starting to... Home court advantage means something in this league, Sean. It, it does. and But that's also why when you do get one on the road, man, it is a party and a celebration. And whoever wins this game, they're going to feel absolutely exhausted at the end. Here's Dennis. He's got a mismatch if he wants to use it. The big man Uday on him with seven on the shot clock. He tries to. He lost it. Here's Tennyson in transition. Two minutes to go in triple OT. Miller, an easy two. Yeah, Miller was calling for it all the way down the court. The pass was a little bit behind him, but able to gather it. And now it's a one-stop opportunity for TCU. 21 for Miller on back-to-back -back games in the Big 12. Inside. Misi goes back out. If Misi looks opposite, Langston Love was wide open there, and he missed him. Seven to shoot. Here's the freshman Walter. Swatted away by Uday. Who comes up with it? Guess who? 
none other than Langston Love, and the Baylor calls their final timeout. He has been Johnny on the spot for Scott Drew today. Good. Well, how do you get to the spot, though? Hey, maybe a double for Jacoby Walter here, and then he can either take the shot coming off, or he can drive it. They've got four flat with Ray J. Dennis triggering the inbounds. They get it to Walter. Two to shoot. Walter does. Around and out. PV the rebound. TCU can wrestle back the lead with a bucket. They go for the lob, and Nelson threw it too long to Ude. Ill-advised for Jameer Nelson Jr. He's had such a great game. And that was a simple one. But sometimes it's the execution of the simple play. The 13th TCU turnover could prove to be the costliest. Only if Baylor executes down here, though. We have one minute to go in triple overtime. Here's Langston Love. Out to Ray J. Dennis. Short on the three. Offensive board for Misi. And a foul, foul is called. It's an offensive foul. They called it on Misi. Yeah, so we're going to go the other way. And Scott Drew is almost at half court. They're going to call the foul on Langston Love. That's his third. Well, that's Langston Love. Yeah, the grab, the reach over the top. They got the ball to Misi. So Nelson will go to the free throw line where he is three of four today. A chance to atone for that turnover on the last possession. And he does with the first free throw to tie it at a C note. I think Jacoby Walter was the last one to make a three pointer in this game. I think if you're shooting threes in triple overtime. You're probably not get the best shot you can. I think the legs are gone a little bit. Yeah. You got to drive and try to initiate contact, get to the free throw line, play through the paint. TCU back on top by one. 45 seconds to go in triple overtime. Hard to believe there's only been seven lead changes, but now there's eight with Ray J. Dennis. 24 for him. Baylor up one. 10 second differential between shot clock and game clock and Jamie Dixon calls one of his two timeouts remaining so one T.O. left for TCU the block then playing but again I like him at this elbow closest to where we are the opposite side of where the bench is that's where I would get him the ball if he can't hit. see if they do it 10 second differential between the shot clock and the game clock 25 seconds left in triple overtime. Nelson with 10 to go. Miller hasn't been involved in this play at all. TCU down by one. Nelson can't put him up by one. He got his own miss. What a play. Number four, make a play, and he did. Five seconds to go. Here's Walter. Going to have to get it up. He stepped out of bounds. And Brett Smith says he stepped out of bounds. Baylor down by one, and they turn it over. Where you want to be. The ball's going to be on the side. Out of bounds. Micah Peavy trigger, triggers the inbounds. Players go flying. Nelson's got it. And a foul called with 1.4 left. Two Baylor bodies went sprawling on the floor. You're foul on the push, you're not going to do that. And instead, the call was on the Baylor Bears. It sends Jameer Nelson Jr. to the free throw line, and essentially all they did was take two tenths of a second off the clock. Nelson hits the first. He Every has 29. Everybody goes back. A little token pressure by TCU here. Make sure they catch the ball in front of you. Don't let anybody get behind the back line of the defense. No timeouts for Baylor. They're going to have to go 94 feet to try to tie this game and send it to an unthinkable fourth overtime. They practice this every day. Here's Love. Almost sent it to quadruple overtime, but instead another heartbreaking defeat for the Baylor Bears and the boos rain down.